Post-production for Awake stretched over a period of about three months. Uh, the first month was taken up editing the film with Final Cut Pro using the green screen footage and temporary backgrounds in order to find just the right pacing and to lock down the exact length of each shot. That was very important because every shot in the movie is basically a visual effects shot involving multiple elements and a lot of time to complete, and I didn't want to waste any of that time creating shots that wouldn't be used in the final film. Once I was confident in the edit, every shot was given a production number, and I switched over to a Nuke compositing software for all of the VFX work. I began by doing the basic green screen extraction work for each shot, while at the same time experimenting with the look of the space backgrounds. I found inspiration looking at the Hubble telescope deep space images, and I knew I wanted something like those beautiful, colorful nebulas. Ultimately, it made sense to generate my own environment using colored noise patterns projected onto a large 3D sphere. That allowed me to plot out the geography of where the wormhole was going to be relative to Proby and to map out all the camera moves accordingly. After compositing the green screen shots over the space backgrounds, I then made another pass through each shot, focusing on what needed to be done with Proby's eyes. Real lights in the puppet provided the basic look, but each shot had to have internal eyebrows added based on Proby's emotions for each shot. The eyebrows were simple mask shapes animated to block out portions of the eye lights. The wormhole was another element that involved a lot of trial and error. The exterior look was achieved using a series of rotating distortion effects and some animated bursts of noise. The interior wormhole was done by projecting the nebula artwork onto a 3D cylinder in Nuke, then distorting that cylinder and flying the camera through it. The interactive lights on Proby were done practically on set with flashing LED lights. Casting the voice for Proby was a critical step in making the film. I knew I wanted a voice with some age and experience but still young at heart, and I was lucky enough to find that quality in a friend of mine, Richard Brewer, an author, actor, and audiobook director, who agreed to voice both Proby and his mysterious inner voice. The final step in making the film was the music. My friend and composer, Glenn Scott Lacey, began to write musical ideas for the film even before I started shooting. It became a wonderful collaboration where his ideas inspired me as I prepared to make the film and gave me a clear idea of where to leave space in the edit for the music to play a significant role. After many months of work, Proby was ready to launch and find a new purpose. Thanks for watching.